Hey guys, my name is Joe Allen. I'm an Adobe Insider, and today I am joined by Pete Bebb, who has been nominated in the special visual effects category for this year's BAFTAs for the film Greyhound. Pete, thanks for joining. Uh, this is your third nomination. Uh, is that correct? I, th I think it's I think it's my third nomination. Yeah, and then I won I won one as well, which was uh, which was fantastic, of course, as well. So yes, uh, thank you for having me. By the way, that's very nice. Uh, yes. Very, very honoured and thoroughly looking forward to it, even though I don't believe there is an event. I think it's all, <laughs> it's all online, isn't it, I believe? Everything's all virtual, but the yeah, awards are My wife was genuine. already on the dress shops looking for, like, what am I going to wear? Look, I don't think you need to wear anything. Oh, that's sweet. You could put out a little um, little carpet <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think so, yeah, I have some <laughs> flashing lights and mirrors all down your stairs. and Exactly, yeah. I'll be buying a dress yeah. whether I like it or not and wearing a black tie, even if it will be at home watching on TV. So um, your previous wins, uh, so Inception in yes. 2011, I believe. Yeah. Um, let's start there because Inception is a huge um, sort of standing of high regard for visual effects. And how has your journey been since that time? Because, you know, that was like eight, eight years ago. Am I getting that right? Ten years ago, even. Possibly, yeah. It's always longer than you think it is, isn't it? Um, well, th I mean, look, f for me, it was... Uh, working with um, the other supervisors, obviously Paul Franklin and, and Andrew Lockley and uh, Corbold for the special effects. Um, it was a fantastic experience. And I think we're obviously Chris Nolan, the director for all of those films, which which I've been most nominated for and won, is a phenomenal director, as we all know. But I think the, the most amazing thing about Chris is his healthy, shall we say, slight skepticism of visual effects, which I like. You know, it means mm -hmm. that visual effects only ever get utilized where they should be utilized because everyone knows mm -hmm. that the computer essentially can do most things, right? It can. With time and, and enough money, you can usually do as much as you can and, and get quite a lot done. Um, but I think with Chris, he tries to build everything he can in camera and everything that should be shot, you know, in camera is. And everything outside of that should be what it should be, which is visual effects. And th th that blend that you have, I think, is perfect. And Inception got that down to a T, I think. You had the most amazing special, special effects from the Corbolts and, you know, a testament to some of the kind of, you know, 2001 type means of doing it, you know, the Kubrick style. And I think that's great. And you tie that in with cutting edge visual effects as well, then you've got the perfect thing. You know, obviously there's no means of actually folding Paris in a physical model or miniature so that was always going to be visual effects and i think that's where chris opened up to that and allowed us to do our work and i think that's that's where it worked for me i think that's where you get the perfect kind of blend between the two uh, departments we say all departments really because obviously it's a team but of course there are there are scenes within that that may not be noticeable as visual effects and to me that's where visual effects really stand out is when it goes completely unnoticed Exactly. Yes, and I, I think that's. I mean, certainly why I joined visual effects. I think seamless, seamless work, which blends in with the material which is shot in camera, is perfect. Uh, mm. it, and it, you know, for me, if it goes slightly stylized, that's fine. That's the creative, you know, tangent that the filmmakers may want. But if there's a shot or shots that take you out of a film for whatever reason, then there is a certain degree of, you know, regret with that. I think so. I think that always. Certainly with Greyhound, for example, that was critical because you have mm. to stay true to authenticity. You have to trace to true to what Tom and the team did, put what they got in camera, and we had to complement that. And, you know, every time you went to stuff on the gimbal set and cut back to what they were looking at, which was obviously full CG, the two had to marry without taking mm. you out. So I think that was always something which, should we say, from the lessons learned with Chris Nolan, I think, and, and that team and that kind of, should we say, that that means of working with visual effects and special effects is is, is perfect for me and I'm, I'm i'm i think i've been quoted in other interviews before whereas i'm not i i really don't like to utilize visual effects unless you really need to which is ridiculous mm. really i'm a visual effects supervisor <laughs> they're going yeah you don't need to destroy cars and blow chimneys up and whatnot we'll do it all well i don't really believe that at all i'm, I'm probably ever so slightly old school like that if you can blow, well, up, a car, I... blow up a car if you can build a building do it and blow it up because visual <laughs> effects can get a pretty decent result, but you'll never you'll never match the real thing. You'll never do. Mm. It. Yeah, I, I perhaps maybe wouldn't put that on your LinkedIn because you're you're not going to get hired if you say you don't actually <laughs> know, need right. me. Look, honesty, best policy always. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Greyhound is is pretty action packed uh, from scene to scene. It it runs at a, a pretty fast pace throughout the whole film. Yeah, um, and it seems as though 
there isn't really a shot that goes by without some effects used. That's quite an intense process for you. We did obviously inherit it. Uh, it was shot and there was a lot of uh, stuff in there. But when we were trying to tie in, I mean, there's a dry dock ship down in North New Orleans, the USS Kid, so that had a certain type of light. There was a green screen gimbal set, motorized gimbal set, obviously that had a certain type of light. And Shelley Johnson, the DOP, did a fantastic job blending light together, which was great. And I think that what, what we were, what we had to do, or the first and the biggest challenge was trying to create that world in order mm. to place all of this in, which is obviously the North Atlantic. And I think that at the time that we started this show, it was a UK winter, which obviously we all know is miserable. And mm -hmm. that's ideal for the North Atlantic conditions. So we sent off a little team to the four corners of the UK to capture a perfect horizon line. So it had to be coastal, obviously, and without light pollution. Mm. And this gave us what was a kind of high dynamic range time lapse. And that gave us the weather, it gave us all that very dramatic cumulus cloud, very subtle little bits of moonlight. And obviously we shot from dawn to dusk. And that gave us a complete, should we say, plethora of material to utilize for the time by time, should we say it's like minute by minute, which is how the film is kind of dictated in the narrative to actually place the correct lighting per scene and then start mm. to bring in shots which were obviously matched to or respectful of what was done in camera and also the Pathé footage, which we got a whole wealth of material that, that Pathé footage, which was, you know, in keeping with how they shot it at the time, you know, mm. and I, that, that was critical. So we'd match camera work to that and we match conditions to that. And, uh, you know, we fast-tracked shots essentially in each sequence to get it in front of the filmmakers as soon as possible so that they felt reassured that they had a film mm. uh, and it was in keeping with what they wanted and they could actually sign off on a shot which then we could marry multiple shots to and when i say that because there are common angles as you probably saw when you watched the film there's a lot of shots of the bow going down you know from from the port mm -hmm. or from on the, on the deck they're very common shots you'll see them in a lot of pathway footage and you know that was you know shot accordingly so then we knew that if we had to get one of those shots correct, then we'd probably be marrying 40 or 50 shots to that. And I think that was a, should we say, a smart way of doing it, given the mm. time constraints that we had on the film and the fact that we a lot of it's full CG because that was where we were left. So you're, you're effectively, um, <laughs> you mentioned that you were, you know, experiencing the weather. You're effectively becoming a method actor of visual <laughs> effects. Well, yeah. I mean, anyone who's saying the visual effects is... is um, Obviously, because a lot of image-based lighting is, is what we do. So, you know, lighting is absolutely key. Back in the mm. day, way back when, you'd have a, you know, a key and a fill and an ambient and you'd blend them together in a very similar way to a DOP would work. But we don't work so much like that unless you really want to light after the fact. Mm. We couldn't do that on this show, nor would I advise doing it anyway. I didn't want to get into that because it's very time intensive. I wanted it to come out of, of the machine once we'd done a decent setup the first iteration that you see would have to be pretty much spot on. So as a as a workflow within your team, does it work on on the sort of um, the scale of things? Is it has it become easier as years have gone on? Uh, to a degree, I think that I the film I just did uh, prior to taking a bit of time off um, was caught in post straight in the middle of the pandemic and it was fully remote. Right, so that's how we're mm. working now. You know, we're all working from home, and I think there are advantages and there are disadvantages to it i think from a supervisor point of view when i when i it's it's very collaborative and creatively when you're speaking about something you, you sometimes you're using your arms you think about stuff and you're and you're even making weird noises and i think that sometimes doesn't come across so well when you're <laughs> doing it in a remote working environment i think that um i think it's better that sometimes it's better to be there in person with teams but obviously that doesn't work obviously when i'm working with vancouver and, and mumbai but um I miss that aspect of it. But I think that more so than anything, I think visual effects lends itself to it very well, actually. I mean, we all mm. kind of turned around last minute, didn't we? We've got about two weeks to do it all before it was all locked down. I think the studios are very accommodating from a security perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went to town on it. And I think there's always a bit of a learning curve. But I think now the actual remote working setup, I think, is going to be will set a precedent now. I think that mm. now it will be more working from home, which I think is great. I do. I think from a work-life balance, which is always tricky in our work, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the entire media, film, everything, games, everything. It's always tricky because we love our work so much. We'd probably just do it, you know, 12 hours a day if we could. Um, yeah. You've got to spend some time with the kids, right? Apparently. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, for aspiring filmmakers who may be watching and wanting mm -hmm. to get into visual effects, yeah. what would be a good sort of pathway and, and direction that you could maybe point people into opening their curiosity? I think the biggest thing to try to do is find out what makes you click, right? Make, find out what makes you tick. If you can find a job in life, which is basically your hobby and your passion, then you're, you're there, you're 90% there. I would, because of what we do, have a great interest of how films are actually made, you know, and I mean all departments, really. I think visual effects touches all departments from hair and makeup, special effects, prosthetics, you know, all the way through set build, production design, all of that. And of course, camera is critical. I think that understanding how a camera works and lenses and how things are shot, I think is paramount, you know? Yeah. I think that's a that's a great way to to round everything off. Um, I think yeah, just following the the passion of things uh, has clearly got you to a great position and um, yeah, multiple nominations and wins in the past. And congratulations yes. and uh, a huge huge good luck. Um, that's not a good sentence. Best of luck <laughs> for the uh, for the BAFTAs coming up. Um, Thank you, with Jay, Greyhound. That's, that's very kind. Thank you.